As you may know, the Gardaí are planning to start using body cams and has just published a two million uh, uh, published a two million euro tender for the cameras. Following which they will be used on a trial basis. News Talks tech correspondent Jess Kelly has seen them in use firsthand uh, prior to this and joins us now. Afternoon, Jess. Afternoon, Sean. So t- uh, tell us about. Uh, in at least in what the Gardaí are envisaging, where mm. will this camera be and how will that work? So initially, uh, once this tender process is done, the little uh, body cams will be on the vests of Gardaí and it's going to be done on a trial basis. So guards in Pier Street, Kevin Street and Store Street here in Dublin, as well as Waterford and then Limerick's Henry Street, will have them on a trial basis. And during this trial, they're going to work out when and why they'll be utilised. Because the first thing to state is these aren't going to be live streaming every single element for an entire shift that the Garda is working. Yeah. They're going to be there and activated in certain use cases. And they're still sort of feeling their way through the legislation and putting the boundaries in place to identify what those use cases will be. Right. And are are, are there legal restrictions on, on when a guard could use the camera. Yes, and this is something that's really important to stress because uh, when any type of legislation is coming into play and when something of this nature is coming into play, on Garda Shia still have to jump through the, all the hoops that anyone else would have to when it comes to introducing something like this. So they have to do what's called a data protection impact assessment which sounds like the most boring thing in the world, yes. but it's vital uh, okay. to protect all of us. So they need to find and, and put forward the cases where the cameras will be used, when guarded judgment will come into play, when stuff uh, should be deleted. All of these individual considerations that come in uh, when, when you are capturing data like this, because obviously there's a huge amount of sensitive information that could be captured. Mm. This wouldn't just be for Gardaí walking up and down the streets of the country. This would be in instances where, you know, it could be a, a call for a domestic violence instance. It could be antisocial behaviour. There's a, a myriad of reasons why Gardaí could choose to activate the cameras. But before a single one goes onto a street here in, in Ireland, they will have to do all of this justification to the Department of Justice and to the Data Protection Commission as well to make sure that all of the boxes are ticked. As I understand it, the Data Protection Commission has been engaging with the Department of Justice to make sure that they are doing all of that background stuff and it's not going to just be carte blanche for for them. Okay, but but still on, you know, on the pavement, it's down to each individual guard to make pretty much a snap uh, decision whether to turn on the camera or not. Well, that's going to be ironed out as time goes by. Um, The guards have issued a fairly comprehensive Q&A, you know, the frequently asked questions when it comes to this sort of stuff. And they're saying that there is... Uh, justification and there are scenarios when it would be beneficial. Uh, some of the perceived benefits, uh, as they've laid out here, are improved safety for Gardaí, a reduction in complaints of Garda misconduct, to save time in preparation for court, uh, to lower the cost of investigations, improve ability to collect evidence for trial, enhance accountability and reduce challenges around arrests. So that's the case that they have put forward. There are some of the benefits that are there. Mm. Um, but as I said a second ago, that they won't be re- they won't be streaming live the entire time. Uh, They will be activated when the guard deems it to be appropriate. Right, okay. And then uh, it's stored on the camera that's in in their body armour and then they they bring it back to the station and it's downloaded there, is it? Exactly. Yeah, Yeah, so the way it will work is the cameras will be worn on the vest and then at the end of the shift when they go back to the station they'll be uploaded to the cloud. And it's not going to be like, you know, a Google Docs where anyone can go in and have a snoop. It's going to be in a very secure um, facility. They say that uh, at the moment the plan is to store files for 31 days. And if it's not of any evidence, uh, evidentiary value, uh, value, they'll then automatically be deleted. If, however, something does hold value from an evidence point of view, it will be retained and then could be brought forward as part of evidence for a court case. Right, OK. And who makes that decision? Is that the DPP makes that decision or, or, or a guard? It will be, I assume it will be assessed like any other piece of evidence. Mm. So when guards are filing their case for the DPP to make a decision as to whether or not something will be brought forward, it would just be like any other piece of evidence that they have. It'll be logged, it'll be categorised, it'll be stored in a secure location. Because we have had instances 
in the past where pieces of evidence go missing, for example. Obviously, it's a li- you'd like to think it's a little bit easier with yeah. digital evidence in that it will be stored. Uh, it's also very easy to identify and track when digital archives have been accessed and by whom. So the goal is to have it sort of as clean and as neat as possible. Yeah. Now, Brian, uh, as already pointed out, um, might be slightly obvious to people. I'm confused. The guardy have to access when they can activate the cameras. However, anyone can shove a camera into their faces and post it on social media. Don't figure. This yeah. is, this is a huge issue. This is mm. something that uh, I actually looked at a number of years ago because the West Midlands Police Force um, five years ago were piloting the use of body worn cameras. So I went over to Birmingham and I met with the police and I learned a little bit more about their pilot program. And they said one of the big uh, benefits to them as individuals was that peace of mind of knowing that a, an officer could trigger the camera on their vest to capture what the, the context of a scuffle or an issue. Yeah. Because we've seen instances of people going live on social media platforms or filming clips of interacting with police forces and not giving you the preceding few minutes to yes, show what's yeah. led to a situation. Uh, so that peace of mind is something that's very important. In the West Midlands example, uh, they had cameras that were always on, but not always recording. So the camera would be on and then if something was to occur, the officer would punch their vest and it would trigger the camera and it would start recording from the 10 or 15 seconds previous to when the camera was activated. Again, to try and give a bit more of that context that's there. It's not clear as of yet because we don't have the full details of the cameras and the devices that will be used um, here in Ireland but they are saying that they won't be live streaming or live capturing data. It will be something that will be manually turned on and off. Right, OK. And the, uh, uh, and then whatever they've recorded has to be used specifically for the, the specific th- event they attended. For, by which I mean, like, if, if, they, if they start recording two fellas having a row on the street mm-hmm. and then in the background somebody passes who's wanted for murder, they can't use that. No. It all has to be based on the the, the purpose that it was captured for. Mm. And this is one of the big questions that has sort of come up when we talk about the use of facial recognition technology. So, for example, in that scenario, if there is a, a snippet of a video captured and there's somebody in the background, they use facial recognition technology to try and identify the people, the two people who are the primary characters in the video. But the facial recognition te- uh, technology picks up the lad in the background. Yeah. They can't use that. And this is something that I think the use of any type of biometric or any identification type technology is always going to be problematic. And there will absolutely be concerns, which there should be. Um, But the legislation as it stands at the moment is that they can't then use that thereafter uh, to identify the third chap in that scenario. Right. Okay, But the legislation does cover... Uh, if you've called, you know, the, you've, you've got a, a suspected offender and you're mm. filming that suspected offender, you don't need their permission to ask them, can I film you while you commit this crime? No. And you also don't have permission to ask the guard to stop recording either. This yeah. is something that's going to be a tool that they can utilise. Um, I'm sure that there will be people outraged at this notion entirely. But I do think we have seen other examples of police forces around the world using this technology and I mean the body worn cameras rather yeah. than the facial uh, recognition side of things. And it has been of uh, you know great value when it comes to evidence, particularly in very sensitive cases where a guard is walking into a situation that could be quite delicate. Uh, there could be you know high emotions, quite volatile people involved in yeah. the scenario. That's something that I, I've always wondered. How do you fully articulate that in a written statement, for example? Whereas if you have the video footage that you can play for a court to give full context to a scenario that played out, uh, I do think it could be of great benefit, but it will come down to that judgment call of when it's used and why. Yeah, uh, but also the, I, I assume there'll be some sort of light that goes on so that the people being filmed we'll see clearly that the recording's taking place now. Yeah, and this is one of those delicious things that comes as part of all data protection legislation. Um, You do need to let people know when they are recording. So it will be evident when the camera is on. But again, you don't have the option to go, come here to me now, will you turn that off? Uh, It is something that will just happen. Yeah, okay. So the the, the people being filmed can't. Uh, If the footage is only uploaded at the station, surely criminals will do anything to destroy the camera before the guard can get back to the precinct. 
Well, I suppose it depends on the severity of uh, whatever it is there. It's a uh, nice cheery thought. The uh, recording, <laughs> that's kind of... Now, they, they, they put out uh, the tender. Mm. Like, who who makes this kind of thing in the world? There's an awful lot of co- uh, companies who would do it and there are ones who would specify or uh, specialise in hardware for law enforcement. Uh, so the tender is out there at the moment and that that text actually illustrates brilliantly one of the examples that I'm sure or I assume uh, the, the the people behind the scenes that Angarish Econ will be looking for which is if a camera is uh, damaged or if somebody attempts to damage it mm. will it do either an auto deletion or an auto upload to the cloud something like that to protect the evidence in question because I'm sure all of these do have uh, different factors do come into play uh, so we don't know as of yet who will win this tender this is one of those scenarios where I think a lot of uh, paperwork and sort of climbing over red tape and working around red tape come into play but the goal here is to uh, award this tender and then to have the pilot programs rolling out with it being fully effective uh, on a wider basis next year and then fully implemented then by 2026. Yeah, I, and there, there was a piece in in the Indo today uh, and it was a, a Q&A uh, with the spokesperson for the guards uh, when they were asked, will Chinese made cameras be excluded from the tender? The answer was no. Uh, yeah. Is that, without sounding too paranoid, is that something to be a bit worried about? It's a funny one, particularly when you look at uh, different government bodies last year asking government employees not to have TikTok on their phone. Mm. And now we could potentially have a Chinese uh, manufacturer making cameras for our our police force. Uh, I don't fully understand the the, the logic or lack thereof there. Uh, but sure, look, we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. Jess, thanks a million as ever. Jess Kelly there, News Talks tech correspondent.